it's okay to not be happy with some of these values. But um, like I've always said, the NFL draft dictates how you should draft your teams. There are some times where we can say, hey, we're going to draft these players, just not there. And I think that's a fair thing to say. We're going to be using Dynasty Rewind ADP, but here's the problem with the Dynasty Rewind ADP. We need your help making it. Patreon.com forward slash Dynasty Rewind. That is how you get in mock drafts that run nightly. We update our ADP every single week. Hoff has been updating it on Sunday nights, I believe he said. He's been updating that. So um, also shout out to Hoff for a great job on the ADP. Just a quick correction. That ADP actually updates every single day. That's just when you get a write-up from Hoff about all the ADP ongoings. So that's once a week, but drafts are every day. ADP is updated every day. You get this nice ADP drop every single week. So it's fun stuff in there. You come in there and snipe me all the time. That's what a lot of people like to do, draft my favorite players in front of me. Still can't get Malik Neighbors in a mock draft even. So it is what it is. Still love it. We get to chop it up in that mock draft chat that little bit more too. That's a, a whole new bond you get to have with me when you mock draft with me. I get a little mouthy in there sometimes. Who's a guy who's ADP that you don't like? This is your dude right here. Josh Downs was that guy for you last year. Is this your Josh Downs of this year? For the wide receiver position anyway. He's definitely up there. Jalen Polk is somebody who is just going way too darn low yep. in uh, ADP for me. Going at the 301. Um, behind a lot of players that aren't even drafted in day two. I, I just, I, I don't get it. I, you know, and to be so drafted so early in day two with pick 37, I believe it was going to the Patriots, which I know is not an ideal landing spot, but they just addressed quarterback. They added other wide receiver help in this class. I see some people in ADP as of when I put the sheet together, uh, Javon Baker was going at 304. So only a handful of picks behind Polk. Some people have said, oh, Baker will poke. And it's like, well, well, <laughs> you know, the Patriots told you Polk over Baker. Why? And it's like, maybe you want to make the discussion. Well, if I can get Baker so much later over Polk so much earlier, but you're getting Polk at Supreme Values. The earliest I would draft him, I'm looking to draft him in the 204, 206 range. That's when my yeah. clock starts ticking. I'm not saying, hey, go and dr overdraft him just to get him on your roster. But I think Jalen Polk is going to do great things at the NFL level. I don't necessarily believe he's that team's wide receiver one for the future. But I think he can be that team's very, very good wide receiver, too, for a very long time. Gets to, you know, boost his rapport right away with Drake May. He's going at 301 right now in Dynasty Rewind ADP. That is consistent with DLF's ADP as well as keep trade cuts values of these guys. So what are we doing? Why are we so low on Polk? I just, I don't get it. A guy who is a good enough route runner, great hands, best hands in the class. I, I'd argue it every day. We'll fight a dude for the ball. And good enough with a ball in his hands after the catch is made, too. So Polk, for me easy grab in all my late second rounds he's been sliding everywhere so i just a guy i cannot stop drafting and his adp is too darn low mike and look i know why his adp is low because the patriots and people are still hung up on the patriots is a bad spot they got the quarterback of the future better prospect than mac jones was for the record just throwing that out there my guy i'm not i've talked about this ad nauseum but um yeah. atlanta falcons quarterback michael Penix jr he's too high I mean, the 206, and I'm feeling better about the 209 to the 301. And if you say that's too late, you're not going to get him. Oh, shucks. I missed out on Kellen Mond, right. too. Oh, Damn. Geez. What am I going to do? That's a rough comparison. Listen, anytime I, I, can take, anytime I can take shots at Kellen Mond, I'm going to do it. I mean, that was more of a shot at Michael Penix than it was Kellen Mond, in my opinion. In this circumstance, you can take it fire however you want, because uh, I don't like either of them. But by the time he actually starts a game, he's going to be 26, 27 years old. Where he is being drafted, you want a player that can contribute at least soon-ish, if not right away, at some point in his rookie year. Okay, this is just, this isn't like an NFL team taking a, a raw player that's coming off an injury in the second round who had first-round draft capital. That I get. That's different. I'm st I'm staying away. If he was an early third, I'd be more interested. Yeah, it, Bob, it, your next guy here, I completely agree with. Is it the landing spot? I don't understand. I mean, I was a fan pre-draft. I'm still a fan. Not at this price, though. And his ADP has changed a little bit since you put him on here, by the way. Yeah, well, and that's something I wanted to mention. I think his ADP was actually listed at the 204 which just doesn't really track with where I think he's actually going in most drafts. Most drafts, I, I checked DLF, and he was closer to like the 2-3 round turn. Yeah. Same with uh, keep trade cut rankings, closer to 2-3 turn. So I put him at the 209. 
and that's Troy Franklin, somebody who I still think is going too darn high, going ahead of Jalen Polk, who was drafted almost two full rounds ahead of the guy. And so for me, suggested ADP, my suggestion, 301 or later. You know, it should not go before any day two wide receiver outside of maybe like Luke McCaffrey. Um, I don't like Malachi Corley, but I don't think I could say like, well, I'm going to draft Troy Franklin over him because I'm not. Reason being, he is a day three pick that obviously had enough red flags and concerns to land him there as the 17th wide receiver drafted. And I'm not sure he starts anytime soon. You know, looking at this Broncos lineup that features studs like Cortland Sutton, Marvin Mims, and old buddy Josh Reynolds, who we talked about in the last podcast. Josh Reynolds who is as annoying as ever as he never really seems to go away or never wants to. And before anyone acts like Josh Reynolds is an inc- inconsequential piece, he managed to outpace Jameson Williams last year on a targets per game basis. Yep. So he's obviously good enough to, you know, keep Jameson Williams a little at bay. I don't think he can't do the same for Troy Franklin, who is obviously raw enough or has enough red flags about his how good he actually is, whatever the case is. So I think you're drafting a guy who, yes, there's the the link to Bo Nix. Awesome. I love that for them. They should have drafted him earlier. If if he was going to be a real big piece of this team, I'm just not about it. Not about drafting him anywhere in the mid mid second round, late second, maybe more palatable for me, but I just I don't want anything to do with him. Keep him in the third round. That's where he should be, along with all the other day three picks. Uh round two is for first round and second round players. Uh, or day two players, day one and day two players. Um, like I said, there's probably some exceptions there, players I'd still take after Troy Franklin, but Jalen Polk sure as heck ain't one of them. And like you said, uh, people are saying Josh Reynolds is inconsequential. He averages 53 targets a year, so definitely yeah. not inconsequential, but I understand that people will say that. Um, so a guy who I think is being drafted too low, and that's Green Bay Packers running back Marshawn Lloyd at the 212. Look, we understand you're going to have to wait at least a year, but it's only one. Bob, you know that Josh Jacobs, his deal is easily just going to be a one-year deal, most likely. AJ Dillon, AJ Dillon, forgive me, only on a one-year deal as well. This is a guy great between the tackles, a very strong, beefy boy, too. I believe he's mm. 5'9, 212 last I checked. He's also an above average receiving back. Bob, and guess what? Nate, if you're listening, he's got tread left on the tires too. He did have some injuries in college. I do believe that is behind him. I want a piece of this offense, which is a very young offense. This is an offense Mm -hmm. that can be together for a while. As a Packers fan, all those of you listening out there and the one I'm speaking to currently, um, you should be excited about the Green Bay Packers' future. Marshawn Lloyd's going to be a part of that as well. So he should be going in the 206 to 209 range, in my opinion. Yeah. Oh, hundred percent. I think that's, you know, again, don't draft them ahead of where you have to, you know, once, once that clock starts ticking, once you get to this range, that's when it's, Hey, maybe it's time to trade up here. And Marshawn Lloyd, everything out of rookie camps is that Marshawn Lloyd has been blowing it up, has yep. looked really good. You know, I, I think a hundred percent, it should be most likely they'll have to pay Josh Jacobs a lot of money um, to be on this team going forward without a restructure. Who knows? They've been wizards of restructuring um, over the last couple of years. So they could always restructure into something less, or I should say more team friendly, less Josh Jacobs friendly to keep him on the team as another piece of that backfield. But Marshawn Lloyd, I think is the future of this backfield. I think that's what they want out of Marshawn Lloyd. So I'm excited to see what they have. And I'm excited to be able to have drafted him just about everywhere at this point. So I am very happy with the value, but, Hey, if you have not drafted yet, or you can still buy Marshawn Lloyd at a cheap cost, something to think about. Bob, you made a really good point. Don't draft him too early. If you're on the clock, we have this thing called timers. Unless you're in a league with Zach Duarte, you get the full reign of the timer on your clock. Workshop those picks, the pick that you have. Like, hey, are you interested in moving up? Don't say you want to move back, okay? I, I used to do a lot of sales at my old job. It's when you're selling something, you have to create a need for something. So you don't say, hey, I'm looking to move back here. Okay. You say, are you looking to move up? That creates a need in someone's mind. You know, like if you're at the 202, but you want to draft Marshawn Lloyd, you think that's a little bit too early? Talk to the person that has 205, 206, be like, hey, you're looking to move up and see if you can work something out from there. So use your clock, talk to your league mates, my absolute favorite thing to do, and see if you can get some extra value on top of Marshawn Lloyd, because that would be amazing bob this is your your josh downs of the year 
in tight end form. Yes, I am a big fan of Ben M.F. and Sinnott. He's going way too low in your rookie drafts. 302 is the Dynasty Rewind ADP. I guess I have not done a good enough job pounding the table for him. I'm looking at to draft him as early as the 207. You know, wide receivers going before him. You know, Marshawn Lloyd is probably somebody I'm taking before him. Uh, Jalen Polk, the guy you're going to talk about next. Um, probably, possibly on the fence. I think I drafted Senate over him. I think that was a tight end premium league, but neither here nor there. Ben Senate is, A, the only tight end that is set to be fantasy relevant that was drafted in day two of this year's class. Mm-hmm. was drafted highly. was drafted to a team that has a need at tight end, although they have Zach Ertz kicking around at this point the ghost of zach Ertz. i don't think that lasts long for if benson it is even behind him to open the season you a know month. he you know it, it could What's be the- a slow progression kind of a thing 100 percent. because hey titans take time to develop a benson it already tremendous blocker great receiver great route runner finds ways to get open i can't talk enough about this guy was you know this was one of the guys i was on early and you know was saying First turn on the film with the blocking, all the receiving repertoire, the production he put on film or put in the stat sheet, I should say. He's going to be a second round pick. Prophecy, as it was foretold, came to be second round pick in your you know NFL draft, somehow sliding to the third round of rookie drafts. I just, I don't get it. I don't get why everybody's so low on Ben Sinnott. I get that we have some concerns with Jaden Daniels as a quarterback, but he's not going to be so bad that Ben Sinnott can't be a functional tight end. And I know too, we usually prefer the second receiving option in offense. I don't know that Ben Sinnott isn't that at the end of the day, when we look at Terry McLaurin, you look at Jahan Dotson, you look at Ben Sinnott. I I don't think, I don't think right now Jahan Dotson has a stranglehold of the widers or the receiver two role in that team. Um, I could see changing over time. I'm not saying it's a guarantee or anything like that, but even if it's not, there's nobody else coming for the receiver three, um, in my opinion, maybe Austin Eckler this year, but that's a one-year deal as well, or most likely. So Ben Sinnott, get him on your roster, draft him a little earlier if you can, because he should not be sticking around to the 302. And if he if you're in drafts with me and he's on the board at 302, he won't be. So that's a, that's a warning to anybody in leagues with me that might be thinking about not drafting Ben Sinnott as early as you should. I love the Ben Sinnott pick. And I'm also thinking that you guys are a little crazy here. Too low on Xavier Leggett. He's going at the 210. Yeah. The first round wide receiver. And Troy Franklin is going at the 204. What are we doing? He should be going as early or even earlier than the 205. I mean, right now, if you took him over guys like in the back end of the first round, if you're like, hey, I'm putting my flag at the 111 on Xavier Glad. I'm not even gonna, I'm not gonna fault you for that. The 111, 112, 201. I don't fault you for that at all. I don't understand what we're doing here. First round draft capital. I, th- I like what the Panthers are doing this offseason. When was the last time we've said that about the Carolina Panthers? <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, it's Better been man. a little bit, but his competition for targets right now, Deontay Johnson and an aging Adam Thielen. And yes. Jonathan Mingo is still there. And yes, Tavian Sanders is there. But like Bob alluded to with Ben Sinnott, Titans take a little bit of time. He's a first rounder like Ricky Pearsall. The difference here is he does not have as much target competition as Ricky Pearsall does. We're talking, you know, Xavier Glett walks in to the building. He is a starting wide receiver for the Carolina Panthers. Ricky Pearsall is not. And uh, yeah, and I like, I kind of like what the Panthers are putting together there. And I like Jonathan Brooks being there as well. It's going to maybe in a year or two. This is a really exciting offense. Excited to see how that all comes together. So get that ADP up. Rewinders. Yeah. yeah. They, they did a good job building around Bryce young this offseason. I think he's right. a good buy. If you're looking for a quarterback right now, just a little fun side note. I think somebody who is still not being really respected in value circles, but as much as Xavier Leggett has these red flags and, you know, I have a ton of concerns with the guy of, you know, not just having a terrible production profile, not doing anything till his fifth, uh, sixth collegiate season. I think whatever the case was, his final collegiate season didn't do anything up until that point that that's obviously concerning, but you know, and that's what puts him in like the mid second for me, where I'm willing to pallet taking a wide receiver of that much red flaggage. That's a word at that point in drafts. Um, you know, behind guys like Lab McConkey still and uh, Jalen Polk probably and other uh, wideouts like Brian Thomas and stuff like that. Push him down boards. The running backs I take before him most likely as well. But like you said, 
there's that uh, first round draft capital that, you know, kind of keeps you a little bit engaged and it, everything it sounds like is they're going to play around his strengths, not yeah. his weaknesses, which is huge for what I think Xavier Leggett can do. And that's what they did last year with him. They played around his strengths, not his weaknesses. He had a great collegiate year. So sure you awesome. see what happens. Bob, five collegiate seasons. Okay, that's what I thought. Yeah, I couldn't. Yeah. I couldn't remember. That. There's, there's so many guys who had five or six years that, yeah, they all get jumbled together at some point. Bob, who is your last player? My last one before we collab on the last one because I am in one million percent agreement. But uh, Bone X for me, a little too low for my liking. He's a first round quarterback who is walking into day one play, and that that's the the differentiation with. Uh, uh, Michael Penix here is Michael Penix going to sit behind Kirk Cousins. And my biggest issue, A, I think you're this way too. Not a huge fan of Penix as just a raw prospect or a prospect in general. Age plays a role a little bit too with, you know, how long it kind of took him to put things together to get to the NFL, whatever the case is. Yes, he gets good draft capital, but Bonex gets good draft capital too. Immediately going to be the starter from day one. He should be going in the first round of drafts or darn, a darn bit closer than the 205. So he's first round draft quarterback starting day one. Pick him up in drafts. Don't, you know, overdraft him. Don't take him earlier than you have to. You know, you don't have to draft him at the, you know, 109, 108. Immediately after J.J. McCarthy goes off the board, you need to run to go get Bo Nix. He's sliding down boards. Take advantage of that. But he really shouldn't be getting out of the first round. I know it's fun to take your shots on more fun, sexy running backs, sexy wide receivers. But quarterbacks hold their value a good bit, um, especially ones that are starting. You know, we saw Sam Howell be worth a first round pick plus for up until he was traded away to Seattle, basically, or until he was benched, I should say. I guess that's probably when the wheels fell off for his value. But he's going to have a good bit of time being a value, draft him earlier than he is right now. I like the value he's at, but he should be going earlier, in my opinion. And another difference, like you said, look, Michael Penix, his competition is Kirk Cousins. Kirk Cousins is a really good competition. Penix's competition right. is Zach Wilson and Jarrett Stidham. Watch out. So, what they are basically doing in Denver is they drafted Bo Nix. And, you know, a lot of times you hear the coach talk like, well, he's going to compete for the starting role. It was basically, hey, we just drafted our starting quarterback. It is that easy. Uh, and look, th this is a team that's set up. Cortland Sutton, Josh Reynolds, Marvin Mims are your three starting wideouts. Greg Dulcich better pick it up, though, with my 95% roster. Of Greg Dulcich. Good luck. I know. I'm getting a little scared. Um, and let's collab here, Bob. Our last guy, Indianapolis Colts wide receiver, A.D. Mitchell. We both think it's too high. The 202, Bob. Mm -hmm. The Nuts. 202. I'm thinking yeah. the 209 to 212. I feel like you might be thinking later than that. What are your thoughts? I mean, that? at that point in drafts, I, I don't think I could balk at the idea of somebody drafting him there. I, I don't hate it. I don't love it. I wouldn't do it myself. I, probably just not a guy I'm drafting because I'm just not that much of a fan. Yeah. We talked about it during our string of live streams during the draft. Incredibly inefficient in college. Yards per route run. Yak wreck Mike. Paltry numbers all across the board. Never had great production, albeit was injured uh, through a good chunk of his uh, sophomore year. But at the end of the day, I'm just not a fan for several reasons. But uh, one, I think, you, yeah, you know what it here? It takes some plays off. You know, it doesn't seem to always put the full effort in. The yeah. last time I saw that, like, so bad in a player was Traylon Burks. And, you know, Traylon Burks was so bad to the point where he'd be tipping plays because if it's a run play, he was set up in this exact stance. If he was, if it was a pass play, but he was in the first read, he was in this stance. I and it's like, oh, if he's, if he's the first read, he's doing this. You saw some of that with AD Mitchell where it's just, and, and to admit to it during a uh, press conference, you know, I, I just, I don't love that. I don't love that mindset. I think that's going to be a headache for coaches. Could coach out of it for sure, whatever the case is. But you also have noted here, Mike, he has plenty of options in front of him and around yeah. him. Michael Pittman's not going to, he's not going to pass Michael Pittman. I think he could definitely pass Alec Pierce at some point. I think A.D. Mitchell could definitely take over that role. That has not been super valuable. Uh, any Alec Pierce managers out there know that. Josh Downs, you know, maybe down the stretch. But I'm I'm not sold that he's going to surpass Josh Downs. I'm just not. I'm not worried about this tight end room at all. I know you have a couple listed here, but yeah, but I'm, they're still going to get targets. They're going to take some off the top for sure. And then you got the the backfield, Jonathan Taylor, and you know whatever other back they tried out there, whether it's Evan Hull or Trey Sermon. Evan Hull, <laughs> I forgot about who, it. Whoever the case is, but 
I'm just not a fan. I don't love it at 202. I just can't. With what else is on the board, I just I can't do it. If you want to talk late for, uh, late second, be my guest. I'm I'm fine with it. I still don't love it myself. Like I said, I wouldn't do it myself. But it makes a lot more sense at that point. Drafts from, in my opinion, you know, you get the first rounders out of the way. You get um, some of the better day two picks, in my opinion, out of the way. Some of the ones with more opportunity who are just better prospects out of the way. Then you're kind of in that, you know, next tier of almost like third round where I've called it the Wild West, where it's kind of a lot of pick your flavor before you get to a lot of, you know, day three garbage or day three long shots, let's say. I agree with everything on AD, AD Mitchell, Bob. You hit the nail on the head right there and you want to continue hitting the nail on the head see in that discord patreon.com forward slash dinosaur rewind get a week on me insanity a week free link is in the description below you buy a rookie draft guide if you have not drafted yet payup.com forward slash dinosaur rewind if you join our patreon at ten dollar tier you get that for free till next time everybody i'm your host michael bauer thank you for listening